to me, wetlands are so important. We're trying to restore the Modi. Modi is the life force. It's it's the essence and the mana in our whenua. Water quality, everything. I mean, there's been over 90% of our wetlands that have just been diminished, and to restore those back to what they should be is just, I guess, the ultimate goal. So the Nelson Lakes, uh, Rotorua, and in particular Rotuiti. Uh, were important places for our ancestors. They were essentially a central hub that connected communities over in the west coast, uh, Nelson Tasman region and Wairo in the Marlborough. So they sort of worked as a centre uh, that was connected by Aratafito, essentially the ancient pathways across the land. Our ancestors uh, travelled across the land seasonally uh, they were hunter-gatherers and so they would travel across all of the whenua uh, following different species and different things that they were harvesting at different times of the year. Uh, the many species found within the lakes, the likes of the tuna, a kaura, a kākahi, freshwater mussels. Birding was really important as well, uh, catching birds for kai, uh, as well as the plant life, right? Uh, harakeke would be used for um, weaving and extracting the fibres uh, to create the clothing that our tūpuna would wear. I enjoyed today. Uh, in the first instance, uh, that we brought uh, Komatua uh, back to part of our an important part of our homeland uh, here in this very special place and uh, recounted uh, stories of what our tūpuna did here and how they existed and, um, and all the reasons why we, we came to this uh, special place. The digger we can bring into this hard area I was telling you about before and we can use some of this material, some of this fill material because we also know that importing foreign materials into the repo is not culturally appropriate thing to do. So we thought if we use the material that's already here, then that's the material that came out the drains. It's from the same site, it's from the same place. It's been a meaningful uh, uh, kaupapa because it's asked us to think. And um, I think that's probably the most important part of any wānanga or anybody, is that you, um, you, uh, you have to think about things and that makes it more meaningful to, 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 to take part. And as part of this project we're also reaching out up of um, talk to us about renaming this wetland. So currently we call it uh, Black Valley Wetland but um, the process has started in terms of thinking about what that might be. Now Whakapapa, yes, going back to Mehana Kiriopa. Mehana Kiriopa, obviously a descendant of Ngāti Kuia and Ngāti Apa. Swamps are food baskets. That's where our people lived on swamps for a, for a reason. It's full of food. What's there? Eels, kokopu, birds, you name it. Namanu. You know, if you, if you look at this place, of course our people lived here. And yes, they, they would not have changed it. They would have kept it that way because it was full of food. Uh, kia ora everybody. First of all, I'd like to thank the Kansman District Council and my own Ngāti Kuea people for allowing us to come here today. I've enjoyed today because we've had the auspicious Komatua with us and we've learnt so many things from their court at all. It's quite dangerous for little children to swim along here, way back when I remember. And the roads were dusty and, and long. I love that our Komatua get to see and talk about the whenua that we fuck a puppet to. Overall, it's about everyone coming together. So it's not just iwi, it is everyone and everything. And I am a firm believer that what they are doing is incredible. And to be a part of that, it's just been an amazing journey. So traditionally, this sort of work that we're doing here, outreach to, to young people or restoration of wetlands, has been done on a shoestring budget and the Jobs for Nature funded projects that have come via 
in this instance MFE, have enabled people like myself to be employed and us to contribute to days like this with the rangataki and tamariki and learning the, the wider values of the wetlands and the fish passage and how that affects their use of the wetlands and their enjoyment of the rivers. Without that funding from MFE, TDC wouldn't be able to do as much work as we're doing. We're going to have around about 50 wetlands that we're going to be able to make positive contributions to the ecology of and that will have all sorts of benefits for the wider community. So without that funding, that just wouldn't be possible. This, these two projects are an integrated partnership with Iwi and it is uh, critical to us to have a, a genuine um, partnership that we can learn from each other but also uh, Iwi build the kaitiakitanga. We've heard from Iwi that that, that's one of their key things that they want from this program is to, to help educate their rangatahi, their tamariki in uh, the knowledge that was once there in how to look after these places um, better. So when it comes to the current status of the environment, you know, talking about this place, the way that we uh, analyse those things is essentially in the same way as our ancestors. Uh, so Modi is essentially the unseen uh, life force that exists within all things. And the Modi of one thing, it sort of has a ripple effect and it affects the Modi of another. Uh, so the Modi of uh, the water in the lake uh, affects the Modi of all of the things that rely upon that water, all the things that live within that water. Look at a place like this, Rotuiti, looking at the way, looking at the surrounding Nahere. I suppose in comparison to other places in our Rohi, um, you would perceive it as being higher up on the scale in regards to the health and status of the Modi. But Matauranga tells us of the abundance that was once here. And although we can still harvest tuna, the Matauranga of our ancestors say that there were many more species that were harvested around here that from being here you know aren't as abundant. So what that means is as kaitiaki we still have much more to achieve in places like this in regards to restoration. Essentially what we find is that it's modern land use, um, the land use that has been introduced with uh, European settlers that has essentially caused the degradation of our wairipo, our wetlands and other important uh, ecosystems. Aspirationally, for me, uh, restoration of te taio, um, you know, particularly looking forward to when my children are growing up, what would te taio look like? It would look like drinkable water. You know, not just water that you can swim in, but water that you can drink. Um, anything below that, is unacceptable. It would look like uh, my children being able to re-engage with their traditional practices, the harvest of mahinga kai, um, being able to go into the nahiri and harvest the resources, the resources that are essential um, for our cultural practices in order to engage in cultural revitalization, in order to learn and pass on the knowledge of Te Taio, the Mātauranga. It was the environment that afforded us the voice to speak. So we must use our voice to speak for the environment.